Hello and welcome to the Academic Outreach and Innovation Canvas Test and Quizlet Training brought to you by the Learning Innovations Team. For this training, the objectives are to create and publish a test in Canvas, locate and implement different settings, and moderate and grade a test. Much of this training will take place within a Canvas course space, so if you'd like to follow along, it may be helpful to log in. You can do so at canvas.wsu.edu. The first part of this training will cover the basics of setting up a quiz in Canvas. So once you're logged in and in your course space, you'll want to navigate to the Quizzes option in the main navigation menu. To create a quiz, we'll want to select the Add Quiz button over to the right underneath the Student View button. And we'll be presented with two options, Classic Quizzes or New Quizzes. We'll want to select Classic Quizzes and then Submit. On the next page, the first thing we'll see is a place to enter the details for the quiz, starting with the name of the quiz. Below that is the text box. In this area, we can add our instructions. And beneath that are various settings and options. The next option we'll see is our quiz type. In the drop-down menu, we'll have four options, practice quiz, graded quiz, graded survey, and ungraded survey. A practice quiz is essentially an ungraded quiz, and the primary difference between a quiz and a survey is that with quizzes, points are attributed for each answer, whereas a survey, points are provided simply based on completion. For our purposes, I'm going to choose a graded quiz. Next, we've got assignment group. So if you're using categories or groups, this is where they'll appear in that drop-down menu. So I'm going to select our quizzes option to make sure that this quiz is attributed to my quiz category for the course. Other options are to shuffle answers. This does not affect the order in which prompts are presented to students, just the answer options that are provided. We can also set a time limit. And beneath that, we can allow multiple attempts. If that option is selected, you will then see two other options. Um, the first being quiz score to keep and you can select from highest, latest, or the average. And then you can also set the number of attempts allowed. Next, we'll see the option for let students see their quiz responses. By default, this option is selected within Canvas. You want to check this option if you want students to see question-specific feedback. Alternatively, you can also deselect this option to hide question-specific feedback initially, um, and you can come back and edit and select the option to reveal the feedback when you're ready. Uh, students will see the feedback when they revisit the quiz. For this to work correctly, the grade posting policy for the quiz's grade column should be set to post grades automatically. You can also use the manual grade posting policy to delay the posting of grades and in turn the visibility of the feedback. Once all qu quizzes have been graded, you can then post scores and students will be able to see feedback. The next option is to show one question at a time. If this option is selected, we're provided another option to lock questions after answering. Next, we have the option of assigning the quiz. By default, Canvas selects everyone within the course. We can enter a due date. If students submit after the due date, the quiz will be marked late. Um, if it is not submitted at all after this date, it will be marked as missing. We also have the option of setting the availability. For students who need an exception, we can select the Add button. 
and enter a specific student. For example, I've selected Butch Cougar, and Butch needs an extra 24 hours, so we're going to make their due date the 21st, and I'm going to select the availability to also reflect that. And we can do this for as many students as we need by just selecting that Add button at the bottom. To begin adding questions, you'll want to select the Questions tab near the top of the page. On the next page, select the Add New Question button. A space will appear where you can begin adding your question, starting with the title. In the drop-down menu next to the title, we do have an array of question prompt options to choose from, from multiple choice to text. In the text area below is where you'll want to enter your question prompt or any instructions that are necessary. And beneath that, we can enter our answer options. If a different answer option is the correct option other than the one that's selected by default, we can change that by selecting the green arrow that appears when you hover to the left of that answer option. To add answer specific feedback, you can select the box that appears beneath the answer option. When done, select done and you can continue in that fashion for each answer option. More general feedback can be provided in the text boxes at the bottom of the question prompt area. Green is for a correct answer, red is for incorrect, and the blue just indicates more general comments. Once you're done adding the question, select Update Question, and our question will appear in the space and we can continue in this manner selecting the add new question option. Once you are done entering all the questions you want for the quiz, you can select save or save and publish if you are ready for students to have access to the quiz. This next section of the training will cover more advanced quiz features. This section will cover question groups, question banks, and unfiled questions. Creating question groups allows for a set number of questions from the group to be given to students to answer. For example, you can have students receive 5 out of 10 questions from a given question group. These questions would be randomized. Currently, using question groups is the only solution for randomizing questions in classic quizzes. To create a question group, you'll want to navigate near the bottom of the page and select the New Question Group button. You can name the group and you can select how many questions students will receive and how many points per question they'll receive if the answer is correct. Next, you'll want to select Create Group. To add questions to the group, you'll want to select the Add button, and then you can start adding questions. Similar to before, you can enter your question prompt, and below that, select which answer is correct and enter the answer options. Again, if you'd like to add feedback to any of the answer options or general feedback, you can do so by selecting the boxes attributed to the answer option or at the bottom of the page for more general feedback. Once the question is ready, we'll select Update Question. We can continue in this manner until we've got however many questions we want in the question group.
You can also add existing questions to a group. To do so, you can click and drag the question you want to add to the group, like so. Next, we are going to discuss question banks. If you already have question banks that you would like to add to a quiz, you can do so by selecting the Add New Question Group button. Next, you'll want to select the link to a question bank. And you can select any bank um, that you already have available. Once you've added the question bank, you'll select Create Group. And now you've got a question group that is using a question bank. To create a new question bank, you'll want to navigate to the Quizzes option on the main navigation menu. Next, you'll select the three vertical dots and select Manage Question Banks. Here, you'll want to add Question Bank. Once your question bank is created, you'll want to select that question bank. Here, you can build questions directly into the question bank by selecting the Add a Question option. What follows is identical to when we were building questions directly into the quiz. Alternatively, if there are questions in an existing bank that you have that you'd like to copy over, navigate back to the question banks Select the question bank you would like to copy questions from. And for each question you would like to copy, select the Move or Copy question to another bank option. In the window that pops up, you'll just need to locate the question bank you want to copy to. And then select Move Copy Questions. And we can repeat this process again. We've located our question. We'll select Move Copy Question to another bank. Since we've already chosen Test Bank before, it's automatically selected that. So now I'll just select Move Copy Questions. When copying questions, it is best to leave the option to keep a copy in this question bank as well selected. That way you don't lose anything. To add our new question bank to our quiz, we'll return to the quiz, select New Question Group, name that group, and then select the Link to a Question Bank option. We can locate our new question bank and select Select Bank. Next, we'll want to create the group, so we'll select that button. And now we've got a group that is linked to our new test bank. Another option for adding questions to a quiz is to select the Find Questions button. In the window that appears, you will see all available question banks and all associated questions related to that question bank. You can select the questions you'd like to add to the quiz and you are given the option to leave the questions outside of a question group, to select and add them to an existing question group, or to create a new group. Enter the information you would like, and then create the group. When ready, you'll want to select Add Questions. And now we can see a new group is created with the two selected questions. Next, we'll go over unfiled questions. When questions are created directly in the quiz, which is what we did at the beginning of this training, those questions will populate within a question bank in the course titled Unfiled Questions. To locate any unfiled questions, you'll want to navigate back to your question banks. 
Typically, unfiled questions will appear towards the bottom of the page. When questions are created directly in a quiz, those questions will populate within an unfiled questions bank. Despite those questions being populated in that bank, though, the questions in the bank are not actually connected to the questions in the quiz. Because of this, any edits made to the questions on the quiz only, or alternatively in the question bank only, will not automatically update to their copies within the other. If you have unfiled questions, we recommend creating a new question bank either for an entire quiz or a specific topic. Next, you'll want to navigate to the Unfiled Questions area. And then select the Move Multiple Questions option. You can select all of the questions you would like to add to your new bank. And then locate the bank you would like to move the questions to. Next, select Move Questions. Once you're done building your quiz, um, it's always helpful to preview, which we can do at the top of the page or by selecting the preview button at the bottom of the page. Either is fine. So selecting the preview button, we can get a look at what the quiz looks like and move through each of the questions selected. We do also get the warning that the quiz will be submitted in 30 minutes. Um, that is because we set a time limit on the quiz. And we can also see a countdown over to the right under time running. Once we're done, we can select Submit Quiz, and it'll take us back uh, to the previous page. When you're ready to launch the quiz, as with anything in Canvas, um, we do need to publish by selecting the Publish button. Alternatively, we can go to our module or quizzes. and publish from there by selecting uh, the publish button next to the quiz. So now we see we have a green check mark and the quiz is published. This next section will cover the moderate this quiz option. First we will select the moderate this quiz option and it's here that we can allow additional exceptions for students, um, especially related to time or if they need additional attempts added. To do that, we're going to select the student or students we want to add time to. And then I'll select the edit pencil near their name. A new window will open and we can see that we can add extra attempts or add additional time. So for Betty Boop, we're going to add 15 minutes for a total of 45 minutes. Please note that Canvas works in addition to, so we can see it already says everyone already gets 30 minutes, so we only want to add the additional time for the student rather than the total time of 45 minutes in this space. Once we're done, we'll select Save. And we can see under the student that Betty Boop gets 15 extra minutes on each attempt. Some additional notes. Exceptions do not carry over across quizzes in Canvas. And there is a maximum of 1,440 minutes, about one day or 24 hours of additional time that can be added. Next, we'll review the student view, which can always be helpful in just getting a feel for what the student experience will be like with the quiz. To access student view, we'll want to select student view at the upper right hand corner.
On the next page, we have the option to take the quiz. And similar to preview, we can move through each prompt until we're ready to submit the quiz. Once completed, students can review their attempts. When ready to leave student view, we just need to select the leave student view button at the lower right hand corner. When you are ready to view attempts, you can do so by selecting grades and navigating to the test you would like to grade or provide feedback on. Here we can select the three vertical dots and access speed grader. The speed grader can also be accessed directly from within the quiz by selecting the quiz name and selecting speed grader. A helpful tool that will be available once students begin submitting their quizzes is the quiz statistics tool which is located to the right under related items. In quiz statistics we have a quiz summary view and a question breakdown. There are additional options to view student analysis and item analysis. Thank you for watching this training on Canvas Test and Quizzes. For additional support, you can contact aoi.li at wsu.edu or join our on-demand support by visiting the Learning Innovations website at li.wsu.edu.